uh, GS1US is a, um, a part of a global, the largest global standards organization um, managing uh, standards around product identification. Um, GS1US is most known for um, being the uh, administer of the UPC barcode. So that barcode that you were just talking about that you see on your products that go beep at the checkout scan, um, uh, checkout uh, stand. And, um, but GS1, we, at GS1, we also administer many other business standards that help um, companies be able to trade information um, about products, about locations, about assets, um, logistical information um, through the supply chain. So again, we're a global organization um, and many people or many companies use our standards um, really for supply chain efficiency. On the other side, the retailers, how do they end up obtaining the barcode? How, like how did how does the scanners know what the barcodes where they cut like to pull those in and what they what they actually mean? So um, the the identifier that G10 when you um, create a relationship when a seller creates a relationship with that retail trading partner you will share share your product information so it'll start with the the G10 that key and any other product information um, definitely price price is always a good one because especially at barcode scanning you're doing a, a, a price lookup. But the, um, the selling relationship, that's when you share your product information through probably uh, product master data file of some sort. And then that retailer will get that information into their system based on a trading partner relationship. And that, that once it's in their system, that's how it'll key off and, and be read by the, the optical scanners. Can you share with us what the ASIN versus the um, sure. barcode is? So Amazon um, has their own unique identifier called the ASIN. It is a way for them to categorize products in um, it, with that are alike. Years ago, they actually didn't require or didn't ask for a G10, and you know sellers could just use an ASIN. What they're finding out is there's usually multiple sellers of the same item um, that go into that ASIN, and they've started asking for the the G10 that's associated to the to the item so that it could actually be mapped back to the tradition or to the original brand owner. Um, Amazon does have some categories where they have G10 exemptions um, and some of them may make sense. For the most part, um, our recommendation is um, assign a G10 to your product because if it does um, sell successfully and you want to take your product into other retail channels, it's already got the product identifier and other retail channels such as Target, Walmart, you heard HSN, QVC, those those do have G10 requirements. So it's always best to start off with that unique identifier. I think it'll okay. play. Are barcodes also relatable to QR codes? That is a really good question. So the the 1D barcode that you see right now that most people see on their, um, that do the beep at the checkout stand, this is a linear barcode. Um, GS1 is actually working on an um, a industry initiative with a lot of our members because they're realizing that technology is changing and a lot more information can be shared. Right now, this linear barcode pretty much is just a price lookup. Um, QR codes um, are something that a lot of retailers are looking at because in those QR codes, a lot more information can be shared. Um, you could have consumer engagement. You could share um, uh, the the path of where a product went through in the supply chains for traceability, for recalls. You could share warranty information. There's a lot of information that could be shared now in a QR code. So GS1 is working on an industry initiative with many of our um, industry members to start moving um, to a QR code based or a 2D barcode that can carry the G10. So it could still act as the point of sale beep um, at the at the um, checkout stand, but then also carry all that extra information. And so you don't have extra real estate on your product because you're starting to see a lot of products that have like the, the barcode for just the scanning at point of sale. And then you have the QR code for consumer engagement. And then you might have a smart label if on your phone uh, for food. We're trying to, you know, move to a single barcode that can do everything. So QR yeah. codes are probably be the future of our barcodes. How do we avoid barcodes that are illegally printed for fake products? So again, um, we don't know, like there are, there, there are bad actors in every marketplace, right? Um, so it's really um, making sure you own your own product, make sure you um, assign it with a GS1 um, issued G10. Um, we find that a lot of companies, um, small companies, especially starting off, they want to save some money and they go to a non GS1 source. Um, they, 
think they could get um, cut corners and, and not um, you know spend as much money um, what they'll find is once they actually put that um, non GS1 barcode on their product um, and a retailer will not accept it they'll have to go back and repackage and relabel so there's you know it ten there can be more costs um, ahead of, um, associated to that so just own your own product um, own your own product identifier um, you know protect your product by using a GS1 um, issue G10 is really my advice.